Oh, I'm definitely gonna need to build some sort of a custom work cart for all this new gear. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Alfred backpack hanger in stainless steel and aluminum designed by me holds your backpack, lets you charge your phone, hold your keys. It's an incredibly versatile tool. You can use it anywhere in your home or office. Thanks for those of you who've purchased recently. It really helps support the channel. This video sponsor PCB Way offers 3D printing services. They offer FDM, SLM, DLP, SLA, and SLS. Materials include plastics and metals, such as aluminum, stainless, titanium, and tool steel. They also offer several post processes for your part. Their lead time is pretty short. Check them out for your next project. Link in the description below. To make a work cart or a workstation for this project, I first documented the dimensions of all the objects that are going to go into the work cart. This is what it's going to look like. Printer on the top, wash and cure stations in the middle with pull out drawers, uh, vats in the middle, and then resin tanks at the bottom, and then a power supply underneath the whole thing on some wheels so I can roll it around. I live just outside of Detroit, and you can see here we have snow on the ground well before Halloween, so it's pretty cold. iHood was kind enough to send over a couple of heated jackets, more on those later, and you'll see us wearing them in the video. So here I'm cutting up the MDF, it's three quarter inch, and this is what I'm using for the entire build. So I'm not a woodworker, so I don't do this kind of work in my shop. I tend to do it in my garage since it's so dusty. I have a table saw, circular saw. Here I'm using a belt sander to round the corners. And next I'll be using a router to round over the edges and make things nice and soft and approachable. MDF is very difficult to seal on the edges as it's the exposed raw material versus the top that is smooth. So I have to go around and seal all the edges. And I do this first with a coat of shellac, and then I come back with some wood glue that I thin down with a little bit of water and paint several coats on the edges. Now that the edges are all sealed up, I can begin assembly and I'll pre-drill all of the connections and then I'll just be screwing them together with drywall screws and some tight bond PVA wood glue. Since everything was built in CAD, I know exactly how it goes together. All the pieces could be pre-cut to the correct size and now it's just a matter of screwing everything where it's supposed to go. I fill all the screw holes with Bondo so that they're not visible and the surfaces are all smooth and flat and it takes me two coats of Bondo and sanding in between each of the coats. So speaking of coats, let's talk about these iHood heated jackets. They have a little control here at the top where you can heat up the neck area. You can heat up your back and your front of the jacket and it has three different levels of heat intensity. You turn it on by pressing the button and selecting the level of intensity that you want. Additionally, there's a button at the bottom that allows you to turn off all the lights so people don't think you're weird with lights on your jacket. And then to turn off the heat, you long press the buttons and the heat stops. Really nice and warm, very comfortable, can highly recommend them. Link in the description below to get your own. Next, I'm sealing the entire unit with some shellac, and this gives me a consistent, smooth finish. Now I'm putting on the first coat of enamel, and it's the silver, since I happen to have some silver, and I'm just using it up as a coat. The final two top coats are white, gloss, 
Rust-Oleum sprayed through my Wagner air sprayer. And I use this thing all the time for what it is. It works really well and gives me a pretty decent, nice, glossy finish. Now that the enamel has had a couple of days to dry, it still smells, but I need to assemble it. We'll put on the swivel casters and their locking as well. This is the power supply that'll go at the bottom, and I'm really impressed with APC's packaging here as they are using a cardboarded pulp mold instead of styrofoam. So hats off to them. Really appreciate them saving the planet with their packaging. In CAD, I build some very simple hold downs to hold the power supply upside down on the bottom of the cart. And I'm going to print these on my Bamboo X1 Carbon. Fantastic printer. Link in the description below to get your own. I'm using it almost exclusively these days. This is also printed out of carbon fiber, so very light, very strong. Works out really well. I position the power supply on the bottom here so that the casters don't hit it and then I just screw it down with these uh, carbon fiber clamp downs using some drywall screws. Let's flip the cart over and start assembling the upper half. Next we'll do the under drawer slides. These are nice and heavy duty. Got these at Rockler. I will link to something similar or the same if I can. All the holes are pre-drilled and I did this before I even painted everything. So assembly is very easy. Some simple platforms here that just snap into place with these soft close drawer slides. And I think they're rated for like 150 pounds. So more than enough to hold the cure and wash stations that are going to live on top of them. So first we'll unbox the form wash. Take that out of the box, set it in place, remove that plastic. No, nope, this is the cure station. Sorry. Now the form wash. All right. It comes with a bunch of tools as well. And those are really nice. They actually get stored in the very back. Yep, they have their own little storage thing, so really nice. Let's move the cart out of the way and unbox the Form 3. We'll take this out. It's a little big. It's a little awkward. <laughs> put the box on the floor. Get it out. Put it onto the work cart. At the bottom, I'm going to store the 1 liter resin tanks, and above that, we'll store the build trays for the different resins. Right, so at the bottom here, we've got the battery power supply. So if the power goes out, the machine can keep running and I don't ruin my print. Here are the resin tanks. These are one liter. I'll show you what one of these looks like in case you've never seen one. These are what supply the printer with its resin and autofill the vats. This is the resin tank. And you'll have one of these for each different type of resin that you have. So you don't have to clean the tank out. At least that's what I do. Because it's too much of a pain in the ass. I just want to switch the uh, different resin and the tank. And it'll make it easy. This is the Form 3 Plus, of course. Digital interface. I have a Form 2. It's on loan from a friend and I've had it for a long time. And I want to thank my friend for letting me use that printer. It's been absolutely fantastic and flawless. And that's what's led me to get one of these Form 3s uh, from Form Labs. And I want to thank Form Labs, of course, for their cooperation to make these videos and to supply me with a Form 3. So let's go over what's inside of this thing. This is the build plate. 
and this is a nice spring-loaded build plate that's magnetic, comes off as well, but it bends and the parts will pop right off versus the traditional build plate. And it attaches the same way the regular Form 2 build plate does. And then this is where the tank goes. So let's go ahead and install the tank here to make this complete. This is the tray. Now the box is slightly different size than what I anticipated because it comes in this additional sort of safety box where the Form 2 ones don't have that. So I can't get quite as many tanks down here in storage as I anticipated. This is the tank. It's a little different than what I'm used to. This sets in place here. This is the wiper. This is a little different than in the Form 2. Looks like it's magnetic. Curious how that's gonna work. And it goes in, not the way you'd think. You drop it down on these rails here, and then it clicks in magnetically. Now it says tank is missing. So to get this tank to seat, you have to push pretty hard. You heard the click and now it's good. Unused. So there's no resin tank. There is a build platform and there is an unused tray, build tray down here. So we're good to go. In the description below, I'm gonna leave a link. And this is a link, this is my affiliate link for Formlabs. It will get you a $500 discount on a machine from Formlabs. But you have to use my link below to get that. You'll end up talking to a salesperson and all that stuff, but you'll get your, your discount uh, to purchase one of these machines. Uh, and that's a, that's a pretty good chunk of change. So look for that link in the description below to get your uh, discount. All right, so the printer's all set up, ready to go. Formlabs makes some amazing materials that will literally change my workflow as a designer. So make sure you subscribe so that you get notifications. And when those videos come out, you can check them out and see some of the amazing materials that Forum Labs has for this Form 3 Plus that are literally game changers for me and many, many other people. Hey, what are you doing? I'm playing Pong. It's my favorite game. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Don't forget to follow me. I'm on social media, Blue Sky and Instagram. Link in the description below and on the channel page. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.